Hello, hello, Crafty Chicks, it's me. I'm here getting, I was getting ready. Couldn't find my iPad, you guys. You know, I need my iPad so I can read the comments. Couldn't find it anywhere, so we had to make do with what we got. We're gonna make it work. So hello, hello, welcome everybody. It is late night crafting on Tuesday night here at the Comfy Nest with Grace. My name is Grace, my light's not on. Let's see, I gotta get all the things ready for you guys. Hopefully so you can see what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited. I've got Happy Mail to open. We're gonna draw names from the Happy Mail um, prize basket. We will add more names to the prize basket. The way it works is the more that you guys hit that sprinkle button, the more that you guys do this backwards. Maybe I just want you to cross your eyes and stand backwards to see everything tonight. Or I could fix it. The more that you guys do that, the more people come on, the more people come on, the more names go in the basket. It's really quite fun. All the while we are crafting and creating, I'm working on the Mother Goose book. But look at this, I'll show you that in a second. I got happy mail to open. Um, the Mother Goose book, remember this book that like was a Mother Goose children's book that was falling apart and I got it for 25 cents at a um, thrift store. And we are redoing it for the upcoming holiday season. And I'm not really a big Halloween fan, to be honest with you. However, um, I really loved the rice paper that I used on the front of this book. I gotta get my iPad, this other iPad plugged in because it's almost dead. Let's see, this way I can read comments. But I really loved this rice paper that I used on the cover. So we paint, we rice papered, we painted, we stamped the back some to get it to um, match up a little. We're gonna work a little bit more in here. Um, this should be a lot of fun, but I wanna show you the book that we did. I did the other night during that grungy and rustic event that was in the DIY Vintage group. Um, let's see, my, my iPad, <laughs> this other iPad, it says something went wrong. Yeah, no kidding, something went wrong. <laughs> Try again, all good gravy. Oh, somebody reacted. It says somebody reacted to a video. So maybe this is it. Maybe I am going to be able to find you after all. Let's see. Let's see. Let me know that you're here. Say hello. When you come on, I can see there are 45. Oh, it says error loading. I hope you guys aren't getting errors. It says there's 45 people here, but I'm not seeing any comments. There we go. Kathleen. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, Michaela. Hello, Lori. Whoop, whoop. Text VFF in the house. I love it. I love it. There's another text VFF, Miss Debbie. Who else is here? Michelle sent me some stars. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, ladies. Hey, Candy. And there's Jane. She's fluffing the nest. Oh my gosh, Jane, that's a super cute way to say it. She said she's fluffing the nest. Hey, Teresa. And there's Michelle again. And Debbie says, I caught you live. Woohoo! All right, let's see. Why Facebook? What is up with Facebook lately? Listen. I, I'm thinking that all of you are hearing from all of us, right? All your creators, all your favorite crafters, creators, artists are, are really reminding you that it's super important, like what happened yesterday. Super important to make sure that you stay connected with us. So our text services, our email service, our YouTube channels, those are great ways to make sure that if it happens again, you can still connect with us and still see our content. So if you don't want to be like unable to access all that content, make sure you get on those other services. In fact, let me see if I can, um, hang tight, let me see here. I know, wasn't it wacky what happened yesterday? It, it just was wacky. After yesterday, it's good to see you. Oh, Michelle, thank you for saying that. It was just a little bit odd. There's still no formal, like, announcement about what actually happened, right? Um, so I do think that that's a little bit bizarre, but maybe we're waiting for the full story. Okay, I just sent you guys a comment, and it has in it, like, ways that you can connect with us. So our email and the text service uh, link, so if you guys want to do that, you can. Okay, now, I can hardly reach that phone. Hey, Kathy Brayton, whoop, whoop, text BFF, there's Christina. Hello, Shirley in Pennsylvania. And thank you for the stars. You guys are awesome. There's Diane in Georgia. Okay, so this little guy I made the other day. Um, it was on Friday night, actually. It smells really good. Those waxes that I use, those circle waxes, they smell like 
vanilla cookies. I don't know what it is, but I hadn't done the back that night. If you saw this, if you saw this, let me know in the comments if you got to catch this. It's actually, it's just something funny like Daddy-O. It's a Daddy-O cookbook, Patio Daddy-O cookbook that I got again at the thrift store and I designed it upside down, but that's okay. Patio Daddy-O cookbook that would make a great, this would make a great like, um, art journal or it could just be a decorative book to hang or put like not hang but like have on your mantle or on a dresser or somewhere in your house especially if you like all things ghouls and goblins I use that metallic wax and we made a lot of texture here on the front I used texture paste and I used a napkin and on the back I just did the napkin and then coated it with the wax. So you can see all that gorgeous texture. It's really beautiful. Somebody had said to me, oh, you won't be able to use that for an art journal. It's got the spider on it. Listen, I don't let anything stop me. <laughs> I would just put a big fluffy rag underneath it when I open it. That's all I would do. I wouldn't let it stop me at all. Um, I don't get too, like, too precious about stuff for real. Now, the bumbles, the spider's bumble is scratching off a little bit. I even used multi-surface paint, it's scratching off a little bit. So I'm gonna to touch that up. I have not top coated this yet. So I'm gonna spray it with a nice top coat. I think I'll keep it matte because that way we keep the pearl, like it won't affect the pearlescent of the wax, which is kind of pearly, the purple wax. But anyway, that turned out great. I was thinking about it today as I was printing out my sheets for today. Wait till you see some of the stuff I got. <gasps> Some of the stuff for the for the this this art journal, the Mother Goose book. I was thinking about it today. I don't normally do Halloween, you guys. I'm not normally a Halloween decorator. I it's just not usually me, but this year I've just been kind of enjoying. There's some been some really like very I like the vintage vibe. Um so we're gonna work inside this book today. I have some ideas of what to do. Gina says, I watch you do the book and I love it. Yay, I'm so glad you guys love it. That feedback is really helpful to me, Janice, or anybody else who wants to give it to me. This is part five of this book. So it's, and I'm, I'm numbering each one, part one, part two, part three. So if you go into the live tab here or on my YouTube channel, you'll see all five parts. Tonight will be one of them. Um, so that you could follow along with the progression from a Mother Goose children's book to where we are now. And I even show you how to bind your pages. So we added all these pages to create this art journal and I've been like decorating them. Like this is a napkin. This is one of the napkins going in the Napkin Lovers Club. Napkin Lovers, I've been bundling your napkin bundle tonight. This is another one that's going in the Napkin Lovers Club. Um, but all of these pages, we I chose them specifically for this book. I've got this awesome piece of orange felt. We've got some music pages. Remember the map? I'm going to put the map in here. And this actually is a very special, perfect meaning for this book. I'll explain that to you later. But first, I have happy mail to open. Miss June, June, are you here? Hey, Elizabeth from Massachusetts. Hello, hello. I got my Massachusetts map. And so, June, um, Elizabeth, you know where I'm going with this. What in Massachusetts makes perfect sense to be in a Halloween book, right? Michelle got her stars today. Oh, yay. Your star cutouts. Hey, Donna. Hello, hello. Hey, Barbara. Oh, it would be really cute as a nature book, too. Yes, it would be cool with that big bug on the front been following along with this book. Lori, I'm so glad. I saw you make it live too. I actually got the spider from Dollar Tree. I'm not sure how I will use it yet, but you inspired me. Yay, Karen. I'm so glad to hear that. I've got some supplies that just came in and I put them on my table here so I wouldn't lose them. And now they're in my way. I got to move them over. <laughs> you gotta, they got to move so I can, I can chat with you guys. Oh, Marsha saw the spider book. Yay. Michelle loves the map. The map's coming back. That night that I didn't put it in the book, I got, I couldn't believe it. I got so many comments from you guys like, no, don't lose the map. It's a coffee dyed map of Boston um, from, from Alamo rental car agency. And I kept it and I coffee dyed it because I am like a junk lover. Like I love making junk journals that become art journals. I love it. I love watching the progression of the book. It's totally inspiring me. Yay, Gia, I'm so glad to hear that. All right, let's open, carefully open, this um, happy mail from Miss June Burgard. June is a member of the 
one of the craft clubs, some of the craft clubs. I've got three craft memberships that if you go to my website, thecomfynestwithgrace.com, you can check them out. June is a member. Oh, it's napkins. It felt soft. There's a little note in here, I see. June says, I found these napkins and could not resist. June, you're just like everybody else. I hope she's here. Hey, Jennifer. Like that, for, I found these napkins and could not resist. Um, hello. I, I bought, what did I buy yesterday at Walmart? Oh, they're over there. I bought some napkins from the Pioneer Woman. I'm like, oh, they got the prettiest florals. They're, it's not even floral season, but it doesn't matter because matter I use florals all year round. First line, I bought these napkins and could not resist. I'm sending some for use to use and for you to share if you want to. Thank you for sharing your creativity with us. Oh, June, Miss June, thank you. Thank you for sending me happy mail. Yay, let's see what she found. She, you guys, I love sending napkins to like, you know, all the, I send it as happy mail. Um, I love sending it. I have bundles on my, on my website that you can buy that are napkin bundles, but the ones that go into the Napkin Lovers Club are very unique. Oh, she got me some of my favorites. I love these snarky girls. I love them. <laughs> this one pairs well. These vintage ladies with these snarky comments. This one pairs well with screaming at people in your head. Look at how pretty she is. She's like, this wine pairs well with screaming people. And she has the prettiest little white blouse on. These crack me up. It's like Mrs. Brady's got mad. Like <laughs> Mrs. Brady and Alice are in the kitchen and they're having a bitch session in the kitchen with a bottle of wine. Okay, here's another one. We go, <laughs> we go together like drunk and disorderly. You guys, I had a napkin bundle last year. It's sold out. But I had a napkin bundle last year that were all these snarky ladies. I could totally bring it back and recreate a new one if you guys love these too. I love them. And I think they make a great, like if you can create something like an ornament or coasters or something with your napkins, these snarky napkins for your girlfriends, what a fun gift exchange that would be. Snarky holiday crafts handmade diy so that is hilarious i love them both and i love their outfits i lo look at the way she has her hand on her hip the one in the blue and she's got her like her chin is up she's got her pearls on <laughs> we go together like drunk and disorderly <laughs> hey listen if paula or any of my other sorority girls are here give me a shout out because i think we go together like drunk and disorderly I do too, Karen. She says she loves the snarky nap snarky lady napkins. They're so funny. Jane loves them too. Jennifer loves them too. Oh, you guys, I need to hear. If you want, if you want me to put another bundle together, you need to tell me that. Oh, Michelle loves them too. Thanks for sprinkling, Miss Jennifer. All right, we have 50 people. I can add names to the prize basket, but let's see what other napkins. They're so pretty that June sent. Whenever there's a particular pattern, the first thing I always want to do is open it and see how does the pattern continue. Like, is it one big square of flowers with those around the edges? And yes, this would make a beautiful background for a sign or for something like a, 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 even an art journal page. Oh my gosh, I love the blue and the white and the yellow together. And I just said to you, I love using florals all year round. So listen, happy mail winners. Perhaps, Miss June, I'm paying it forward. Whoever our happy mail winners are tonight, I'm going to pick some names. I will gladly share one of each of these napkins to the three people who win. So what happened is, I'm going to pull three names. Recently, I pulled five names from the basket, the prize basket, and three of the people have not claimed their prizes. So I'm going to pull three more names. Um, here's how it works. If you don't know, this is how it works. I add names to the basket. I write your name down, I write the date, I put it in the basket. The names in the basket go all the way back to February. So if you ever were here live with me and you got your name, or replay, I'm, at, I'm actually adding replay watches too now. If you ever had your name go in that prize basket, there's a good chance that you could win. The only way that you will find out that you won is if you are a member of the Crafty Chicks Club. That's my free craft community called the Crafty Chicks Club. It's a group here on Facebook. It's a craft community. It's just like where we hang out, we share our projects. Um, you get news and updates about the Comfy Nest, like who was polled and who won, like giveaways and happy mail is one of them. So you have to be in the group only because here's, you don't have to be in the group. You can do whatever you want. 
I announce it. These three people were announced. They're in the announcements tab saying that they won, but because they're not members of the group, I cannot tag them. So they get no notification that I tag that that I posted that they won. And I cannot, I do not have the time to chase these people down. So if you want to make sure that you know that you won, please just just go over there. It's a free group. There's like there's no not there's no commitment. There's nothing going on. I mean, it's just a great place to hang out with other crafty chicks. Okay. Let's pull some names. I'm going to go through. I'm going to go all the way to the front. Let's pull the first comment was from Tracy Sipling. Tracy, your name's going in the prize basket, my friend. Miss Tracy Sipling. You were the first comment. First name that I saw. So here we go. What day is it? It's the 5th. Good gravy. Already October's going by quick. So Tracy, your name is going in the basket. I'm going to scroll and I'm just like randomly scrolling through these comments here. Donna Ball. She says... Hi, Grace. Donna Ball. Your name is going in the prize basket. I put September again. I'm like six days behind. It's We're beyond September. I had to erase it. Good thing I'm doing it in pencil. Donna, your name's going in the prize basket. So if you're watching the replay, make sure that you comment that because I will go back. It will be definitely after 24 hours. Usually it's like three or four days later. I go back and I pull another name for the prize basket from the replay watchers. So somehow comment that you caught the replay if you're watching the replay so that I know that you're here and then you get another chance perhaps at winning. Next person whose name, Michelle Piner Maidlow. Your name is going in the prize basket. And it was just a bunch of like hysterical laughing emojis that... <laughs> that was your comment. All right, let's see. So much going on. This whole Facebook thing yesterday was one thing. I've got three new names. I'm going to put you... No, you know what? I'm not going to put you in the prize basket yet because I usually even announce those whose names go in the prize basket. How will I do this? I'll just rewatch the video. I'll put them in before we... What we I'm going to pull names tonight. So I'll grab that prize basket and I'll pull names names and I will send you guys I will share these napkins that Miss June this sweet little note that she sent me that Miss June sent me thank you June for the happy mail whoop, whoop. and she's a text BFF that means she's on my texting service so Miss June thank you there they all all laid out um I'm just gonna put them down there so I don't lose track of them and we are gonna work on this book tonight let me show you this fancy fancy free graphics from the Graphics Fairy. If you do not use this website yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, girlfriend. I went, I wanted to find which, I, I, I typed which in her. She has thousands of free, downloadable, printable graphics on her website. You can also purchase bundles, but before she sold bundles, I've been using her website for years, before she was selling bundles, she had these free, like, there's public domain pictures and, and graphics and stuff. So I went and typed witch because this is a witch book. This is a witch book. It says witch lives here. And then there's, wait, there. <laughs> it's opposite for me. There's the cameo of the witch. And she has her laudanum, that poison. And, and... Eat, drink, and be scary, I did with the spiders. So I told you, oh, we kept Mother Goose up here. There's her house. And she looks kind of like a witch. She's dressed kind of like a witch. With it. Her hat looks kind of witchy. Oh, wait, where is she? Hold on, girls. My, my chair was sliding around on me. See her down there? With the animals that I could not identify? She has a broom. She has a pointed yellow hat with flowers. She looks a little witchy. I'm sorry, Mother Goose. And look at you guys. This picture was perfect to keep in this book. This was not intentional. That night that we did the first night and I put the rice paper on the front, it started with the rice paper and knowing that of all the books that I have from the thrift store that I purchased in the past, this book, the rice paper fit perfectly on the front. So I'm like, okay, winner. The Mother Goose book is it. Well, then when we opened it and I'm like, what am I going to do with this page? It looked like this. I haven't done anything to this page yet bright and pretty illustrations of like this forest scene with Mother Goose. And I said, what am I gonna do with this page? So I blacked out most of it and kept Mother Goose, these little animals, her house, 
but she has a cat with yellow eyes on the front step and she has an owl. Where did the owl go? Hold on, I'm upside down, right next to it. And she looks like a witch, you guys. Like, it's like the perfect little, maybe she's a good witch, good witch scene. And it matches the papers that I put in the front. So this is the fun part is you get like, these are just scrapbook papers that I, w I wasn't using them. I passed them up a gazillion times and I thought they can go in this junky art journal. They're perfect. They match perfectly. So we've been working on this. So we did this one in one of the, one of the sessions. Um, I have coffee stained papers in here. I have some music papers. I had printed out this crow off of the graphics fairy thinking I would use it on this page. But as I was going through all my papers, I was like, yes, the map. I forgot. Everybody loved the map. The map would cover this page really well. So I'm going to use the map. I'm going to use the crow, but I needed some witches. So I went to her page, the graphics fairy, and I, I just typed in witch. And then she has different categories. And this one, this looks like a kind of like an old Halloween greeting card. And she has, it says, the witch gets all the news tonight. The man in the moon tells all. My secret he will tell I know. Your fortune, your true love will show. It's an old, old, looks like a Halloween card. And she has all the little mice and the pumpkins down at her feet. Okay, so that, I found that one. And I, did I print this one in color too? So I have a black and white printer and a color printer. I printed one of them. Yes, I printed her in color. Look at the color. Her red dress doesn't really match my book, but I loved her in color. Like, I loved her. You can even see the man on the moon, his face is there. So I printed it in black and white, printed it in color. I think I'm going to use the one in color. But then there were all these other fabulous illustrations. Charms of the Witching Hour, Halloween. And look at her on her broom with the cat. She has a white cat. And the man on the moon, you can see him. He kind of looks like a pumpkin with the with the greenery coming off of him. These are all from graphicsfairy.com. This one is flipping fabulous. I printed it in two sizes, but the problem is, I don't think I'll be able to use it, or maybe I can just use part of it. The background on this one was so dark that the witch kind of gets lost when I do it in black and white, and I think it was a black and white illustration. But she's fabulous. And look at her owl. I love her and I want to use her, but I don't know. So I have this I could use. I have her I could use. And the colored one of this because it matches all the other stuff. Like, it, look at it. It matches my felt perfectly. So these are possibilities. Now, the map. Do you guys know in Boston, just outside of Boston, there is a town called Salem used to be called Salem Village. We just call it Salem. I grew up in Boston. Um, do you know that's where the Salem witch trials happened in late late 1600s? And it's like a renowned place to go. If you're a Halloween fan, it's just a renowned place to go. Um, I took my kids and my dad there. Uh, this was a long time ago now. My dad's been, has passed on a long, few years ago. Um, but I took my kids when they were really little. We, My dad and I, we went to Salem. And they have lots of little celebrations and activities for the kids. And there's a lot of history there. Like there are museums and um, it's really a cool place to go if you appreciate, you know, historical stuff. And I really love that stuff. Anyway, I'm going to use this map page. And Salem is right here. Here's Boston in the yellow part. But Salem is up here kind of on the water. Well, it's all on the water. Salem's up here. So I am going to make Salem like stand out somehow on this map and we're gonna put it in with some of the witches <gasps> and the crows, right? It's perfect for this Halloween book. Um, but the other things I found, so I was trying to come out of Graphics Fairy and I think because I was asking about witches, this prompt came up for skulls. This is not usually my taste, but these are amazing. So I printed them out in black and white. I got a small one of this and says, it looks like it's from a medical journal actually, because it says the head figure four and then it has all of the parts of the cranium are numbered. Look at it big. You guys, it's, it's cool. I, I wouldn't think like I would look at this and go, e, but eek, like e, I don't like it. However, for this book, it's perfect. There was one other one, this one that I thought was super cool. Because the mouth is open, but again, it's like an illustrate. It has like letters illustrating, almost like it's like a from an old 
medical book, like from a manual. So these may make their way in the book somehow too, but tonight I'm gonna to focus on the map and the witch and the crow. And I think this is gonna be perfect because my book has this really large page here. This was just packing paper and I covered it with a napkin and we grunged it up. Um, and then I put the eat, drink and be merry be on here, which this is a smaller sheet of paper. Now I have several smaller sheets of paper in the journal, but you can still see the witches or the um, black and orange spiders. And then I have another piece of felt here, or I have the piece of felt here, can still see the spiders. And now we have this big page. That's where I'm gonna put the map, because the map is really big. It's gonna fortify this packing paper, which I told you is kind of flimsy on its own. This is the, the sheet, this is the page in the book that last, it might have been the last one, I used the Dollar Tree, um, the new vinyl sheets from Dollar Tree underneath it. I used the new rub-on transfers from Essential Stencil. And this would have been garbage. This would have been. This piece of paper here is coffee dyed paper that <laughs> this is what it, this is what it's from. That's the coffee dyed paper. That's the center of it, that little house. And we, we made these in my craft crate, one of the membership clubs. And when I was done sanding the paper off, I had a perfect house in the middle of this coffee dyed paper. And I said to the girls, I can't throw it out. It's going to be perfect in a journal page. And look, there it is. It's perfect. In fact, at some point, I'll find something appropriate to put in there. And right now, it just makes it like a really pretty frame uh, for something. And it's opposite this wacky <laughs> scrapbook paper that I had passed up so often. But the colors match. They match really well. Anyway, on the back side of this is where we're going to put this map. I just have to figure out what part of the map do I want to cut. Because Salem has got to get in there. So if I come from this edge, no, we're gonna, I want the Boston mass and vicinity. I want this part there because anybody who knows Boston, they uh, lives in Boston, they know Salem, right? So it's a, Salem is a Boston mass place, historical place to go. Um, so we are gonna take it like this. I just have to get the right size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually flip this this way and I am going to mark off with a pencil where I need to cut this paper. This one will be more square. When I put my, this junk journal art journal together, this packing paper, I told you guys, it was not cut well, it was not cut straight, but it didn't matter to me because it's kind of like an artsy junk journal. It was, I'm using up stuff that I would have thrown out anyway. Um, so I thought that was pretty handy. Now I wanna be a little more straight about this because I can be. This is straight as it is, so if I if I stick with the cut lines in a good place, it will keep me straight and it'll look really nice. Okay, so if I use my cutting table lines, my, my little cut mat here, you know how to do this, you line up your paper, whatever you're cutting, on the grid lines of your board, your cutting mat. So line up the horizontal, line up the vertical, and if, if your paper is straight, you're gonna get that 90 degree angle straight and you're gonna know that if you it's straight all the way down the line and it's straight on this line, whatever cut you make is gonna be right. Now, my cutting ruler is underneath my bottle of water, my glass of water, and underneath the sticker book. But I line up my clear quilting ruler. It doesn't have to be clear. I just like to use the clear one because it gives me more grid lines to make sure that I'm straight. And I'm gonna line it up with the, the major line that is near my cut line marking that I made with my pencil. And if I line everything up, it should work. Yes, my gan man. Hi, buddy, I'm focusing on cutting. What's up? You wanna say hi to everybody? I've got a visitor, hi. guys. Hold on, say it louder. Hi. Wait a minute, hold on. Am I doing this right, Gannon? Yeah. Where's, where's my Salem? It's on this side. Yeah, because there's Springfield, there's the water. Yeah, this is what I need. I want to make sure I was cutting it right. And I'm going to I'm gonna move this over. I need it to move over like a sixteenth of an inch to get on my line of the table. Make sure I'm straight. It smells this paper because it's coffee dyed. 
smell so good, but look at it. I still have this big piece of map that I can use. And actually, my brother and his wife live right here in Massachusetts, right near Springfield. So maybe I can make them something with that for Christmas. All right, now I have this part done. Um, let's see now. Oh, Grace, you did it wrong. I did it wrong, you guys. Did I cut it wrong? Oh, I've been known. I've been known. Well, I, I had to do it like, wait a minute, what did I do wrong? I should have been cutting it this way. No, this way, I need it this way. It's like it all backwards when I'm cutting. Okay, um, backwards, talk about being backwards. I need to make sure that I get it lined up. I'm gonna have to cut a piece of this off. I'm really, I really am backwards. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just line up the edges in the center, like where the binding is. And I don't need it to be stinking perfect, but I need to have a cut point for this part now. We need to mark this and cut this. And you could just take a ruler. That might be easier. But this, you see the way Grace works? Making things harder on myself. Okay, if you're worried, if you don't know, always cut it a little bigger, because you can cut another sliver off. Right? So you can always cut another sliver off. And if you have a cutting tool, like, you know, I do have the cutting tool as well that you can put your paper in and just slide the little thing. I do have that too, but I'm trying to just use what I got on hand here so I don't have to go digging it out. Now, my right angle looks a little bit off, which very well could be because I coffee stained this, so it could have gotten warped gotten warped in translation. I'm going to go a little bit bigger than I need because I can always cut off. Yeah, I can cut, always cut off a little more. And I always check, like, is this something I'll ever use? No, it's not, so that can go in the garbage. I always do the check. Okay, now, Gracie Grew, this is going to go here. And it looks just about right to me. I'm going to glue it on, and then I can manually, just with that pair of scissors, I can cut that off. So I'm not worried about that. So let's glue it on. I think you can use whatever the heck you want. Tape runner, glue, um, you know, a glue stick. I think glue sticks don't, in my opinion, they don't stay long term. Tape runners seem to stay. If you have double-sided tape, that would work. This one is out. I'm going to refill these. Let's see, is this one out? No, nope, this one has some. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to do something witchy on here. There's the city I grew up in right there. There's Boston. And there's Chelsea where I grew up. Right there. Just north of Boston. But Salem's way up high. I have cousins that live in Salem. I do, I do. Okay, I'm gonna put this, you can lollygug around, but like you can just like get so specific about your stinking measuring that it takes you three years. Don't go there. It's just, then it just takes all the fun out of it. I promise you. Just tape the darn thing down. I'm trying to line things up. You wanna leave a little bit of room. You don't wanna tape down, whoa, you don't wanna tape down your binding because your binding, you don't want to like restrict it, or at least I don't. You can do whatever the heck you want in your book. I, who am I to tell you what you want to do and what you don't want to do? That one little corner is being stubborn. All right, now I only did like two strips here so that then I could come in and cleanly make sure I get all of these edges down. Can you believe Halloween's coming? Does anybody dress up for Halloween? Do you guys get dressed up for the grandkids, for yourself? Do you work at a daycare maybe or at a hospital? Like I can think of so, if you're a teacher, principal, I can think of so many reasons why you might get dressed up. If you look at work at a long-term care facility, they do usually do great activities for their residents. Do you, do you get dressed up? Okay, look it. I actually don't even mind it, but it is a little bit over. Remember I told you I cut it a little bit big. So you can see the map right here. And for now, I think I'm just gonna leave it for now because we can always, you can always come back. A lot of times I'll do this where I'm not sure what I wanna do with that, so I'm gonna leave it for now. I can always go back and cut that little bit of overage, but for now, we got the spiders here. We got the map with Salem. Now somehow I gotta get Salem to be like, really, like 
there's Salem, like right here, <laughs> which is here. <laughs> um, so I'm going to grab my circle. I, it's right behind you guys, actually, right behind the camera. I'm going to get up and grab my circle um, stencil. You could use, if like, <laughs> if you had something round, you could just trace it with something round. You do not need to have a circle stencil. But I have one that gives me lots of options of sizes. But look at how cute she would be on this page, you guys. Let's cut her out and just see. Because I'm not sure what I'm going to do on this page. Let's just cut her out. She has an orange frame around her that matches my orange felt. So she will be perfect on here. Who gets dressed up for Halloween? And do you know what you're dressing up as this year? I will admit to you. I, I think it's great when, and I always admire people who do. My, my girlfriend Holly was always good. When we were um, young and hanging out still, she lives in Pennsylvania now, I'm here. So we don't get to hang out anymore. But when we were younger, if there was an event to get dressed up for, she was awesome at it. Like she just was awesome. And I was always like, uh, no. I'm not getting dressed up. She's like, you have to, it's a part. No, I don't. That was just me. I'm just not a big fan of dressing up. Listen, it's hard enough for me to get myself ready and out the door. I don't need the challenge of like, now I have to be a witch. No, it's just not happening. But I love that people do. I did go to one party once and dressed up and it was fun. I, I will admit it was fun, but mm -mm. most of my life, I've not been a big fan. All right, let's see who's getting dressed up. Christy does it to embarrass her teenagers. It's Christy, what are you gonna dress up as this year? Janice does sometimes. Donna works at a daycare and we do dress up and we have a parade. When I worked at the college, the local community college, there's a daycare inside the college um, for staff and for residents, like local community members. And the kids would always, my kids went to that same daycare when they were really little. They always get dressed up and they walk them around to all the offices. It was like, the, it's so much fun to see all the kids and with their little trick-or-treat buckets. I love it, I love it. Kathy says, my favorite costume that's my go-to is Raggedy Ann. My husband and I won a contest one year with Raggedy Ann and Andy, that's really sweet. She's gonna be a pirate this year. Oh, that would be fun. And Barbara says, I'm the same way, it's not my thing. <laughs> oh, thanks, Tammy, <laughs> thanks for saying so. I love that, uh, Christy, you're embarrassing your kids. We, and the other thing is, you guys, I got it cut a couple weeks ago. Barbara, that's funny. GK. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Phillips. He says, Chelsea is wicked awesome. Yes, it is. Well, it's wicked awesome because that's where I grew up. So it is in that regard. It, like, raised me and my 12 brothers and sisters. So I think it's all right. Um, so anyway, what I was going to say, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought about something about dressing up. Was it embarrassing the kids? I was on the track of embarrassing the kids and I lost it. We'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe it'll come back to me. Um, oh, Teresa, you're saying hello to Gannon. That's so sweet. Hey, Sharon. Hello. Hello. Hey, Janice. Thank you for saying hello to Gannon. Look at how sweet that looks on there with, it has that little skinny orange and I wonder, it may even look cute with a black something behind it. Like if we if we framed it out black. So here's my Boston. I, I need to grab my little circle. I'm gonna grab my circle and I might grab some black paper. I'm here, you talk amongst yourselves and share with everybody, what are you going to be for Halloween? Actually, if I grabbed, I have a lot, you guys, lots and lots of paper. <laughs> Let's grab some black because I think would this be really cute with like a like a double frame around it, right? So here I need to be accurate. Here's my cutting. Here's my circle stencil. This, it, to me, this feels like being at a craft retreat when I'm working on a junk journal like this or an art journal because it feels like just hanging out with the girls and guys, Mr. Phillips, hanging out with everybody just chit-chatting about the upcoming holidays and our kids and what our costume's gonna be and all the good things about life, right? We're chit-chatting and we're creating and I'm asking your opinion as you as we go. It's like a virtual craft retreat as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I want it to be a little bit bigger, but I don't, I'm not all about like, where did I put my rotary cutter? Girls, guys and girls, where did I put it here? It's a good thing I have another one. It's probably under the book on that side. 
this one is the one that feels like it needs a new blade. All right, well, it did the job. It did its job. It's like the fella check always says, do your job. All right, let's see. <laughs> Here we go. Next one up. That, that's super wicked crooked. What the? This side, the side that I cut is straight, but this side's super wicked crooked. What, what happened there? I can't use that side as my, my angle. What on earth? Hold on, folks. Either I'm cockeyed, I got the witch's eye, or I think what must have happened is this was this wasn't a full 12 by 12 page. I think I must look at how crooked it is. I must have used it for something and then just threw it in the wrong pile. I threw it in with all the good papers. It should have gone in with the scrap papers. Hold, hold on, we gotta straighten it out, but I still need to make sure it's wide enough. No, that won't be wide enough. I gotta go, I gotta go further. Oh, I'm gonna be right on the edge of fixing this. Oh, and it moved. It moved on me. I was looking, you guys, at a fancy, fancy schmancy magnetic uh, cutting board recently, and I was kind of, I did it crooked. I was, oh, it's just a tish off on this side, and I don't need all that, so we'll, we'll take this side, because <laughs> I only need up to here. This part's crooked right there, from there to there, so it's actually quite lucky and blessed that that worked out right. All right, let's cut it here. And then we'll have a nice black frame because the frame on here is orange and I don't want to lose that. However, back to this, I've got my orange felt. If I put her in the middle here with that, that's just so much better. Cute. She looks mad. She looks pissed off, actually. Look at her face. <laughs> she looks angry. She's an angry little elf. <laughs> You know, we're mixing our holidays now. Listen, girls, guys and girls, this is me when I lose. Where did I? I need my concierge. You know, I told you I like the idea of having a craft room concierge, someone who just hangs out with me. And when I say, hey, find where, where do my sisters go? Find me a pair of scissors. <laughs> hey, clean up that mess. Clean up what I just dropped. Do you mind? Could you please? Could you please go get me a Diet Coke? concierge and then when I'm all done crafting and creating and I have all those dirty paintbrushes the concierge will take them kindly to wherever you're going to take them and go clean them all for me and bring them back nice and clean and ready to go all right we're sticking her on there so we've got one frame on there and I don't know if I'm going to center her yet I might go a little wonky with this I don't know so we're just we're going to let her float there for a minute let's look at Salem on the map and how are we going to make Salem really stand out here? I think I'm gonna go even smaller. See how this has all these circles? I just got it at, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby, I think. But I like that it has all these different size circles. So if I do this, I get Lynn, Peabody, Marblehead, and Salem. If I do this, Marblehead's almost gone. Oh, if I do this, I get in Hot Bay, which is good because in Hot Bay, like you kind of think of that area, right? With Nahant Bay. Let me fix my shirt because it's riding up. Okay, I think we're gonna go with this one and I'm gonna circle it and I don't know how I'm gonna feature it, but I'm gonna use my charcoal. <laughs> of course, it would be at the open. Oh no, I moved it so it would be readily available to me. I remember I moved it to up here my stabilo all pencil because i love it okay we're gonna try to get marblehead in there we're trying to get salem marblehead and a little bit of the ocean so not bay and i'm gonna use my charcoal stabilo all pencil because it it's cool <laughs> and it's really black so i'm gonna really draw some a circle around that and then i gotta make that pretty somehow so i think i'm going to i don't want to lose like let me hold this up and show you if you look here where it says right in the blue part where the water is you can really see the coffee stain right here like you can see that coffee stain right there and i don't really want to lose that but i want i want salem to show really well like look here this is where salem is so i'm just gonna I'm gonna come in with my Stabilo All, and it's not even underneath because I have all these wacky sized pages. 
So it's, it's not letting me draw evenly. So what I'm gonna do is put this book under there so that I have like a more solid surface. And I don't need this to be perfect, but I'm just gonna draw around it like someone marked the map, like we're going to Salem. This is where the witches are gonna focus their time around Halloween. See, I like that better because it looks more natural. And the Stabilo All pencil, if I wet this, if I wet these markings, it's gonna make it all like float a little bit and move, which is really cool. Okay, that looks more like someone took the map and said, that's where we're going. Okay, and it's funny, right above Boston, it shows little arrows where the Alamo rental agencies are. <laughs> you can see Alamo, Alamo. Okay, that I like better, and I don't know yet if I should, if I should put any paint over the rest of it. I thought about printing several different witches really small and kind of like putting them on the page, but I decided against that. I do kind of like that, but I think maybe what I'll do, let's just muck up this page a little bit more with the Stabilos. And should I grab my woodies? Hold on. My woodies. Woodies are another. Where are they? Hey, girlfriend. There you are. Wrong drawer for the first four tries. These are also Stabilos. Stabilo brand. They're called woodies. These, I think they actually sell these. Basically, they sell them for children, but adults use them too. They're like big art crayons slash pencils. And they're water soluble. See how they're really um, wide, so they're great for little hands. They're chunky, they're called woodies. They come in a variety of colors. Comes with the big chunky pencil sharpener. I think there was a paintbrush here because when you wet this stuff, it spreads. And I think they're opaque. Like, let's take this black piece of paper and just see what happens when we put white on the black piece of paper, just to show you how this works. See, even though it's white, it shows up really well on the black. Then, just so you know how it works, if you haven't seen this before, I'm just gonna wet a regular paintbrush. I put a little bit of water on there. When I wet these things, they spread. See how they, they like get, it softens the color and it spreads it. So then you have a lot of control, kind of like a watercolor. You have a lot of control over how dark you want them and where you want them to be and how wide your markings are. I love using these for my journal pages. Um, so I think what I was gonna do is take out the gray and the silver. The white I don't need. I don't need the white. There's a gold one, that would be really cool. I'm gonna take the gray and the silver and I'm gonna, this is black, so that would be really mucked up. I'm gonna take the gray and the silver and I'm just gonna kind of frame some of this, like muck it up even more is the word. I usually use the word muck it up. So I'm just gonna come around the edges and just add more markings, like doodles kind of it, if you will. I don't wanna lose the coffee dyed color of the pages, but I want this map to look really old and marked up. So we're gonna come in, what color is this? Hold on, <laughs> three and one, Woody. Come on, Stabilo, what color is this? Why do I not see it anywhere? Probably just because I need readers. It's okay, we're gonna use it. It looks brown now to me, but that goes with the coffee stain, so I'm fine with that. Okay. When I take that paintbrush and I start wetting things down, it's gonna move that, that color. It's gonna start moving it on me. See that, how it blends it? Can you see that? So all I did was touch this part. I did not touch the top, but you can see the difference. See how much wider and more bold it is? It spread it out and it makes it, you can move the color. You can move the color with a paintbrush. So we're gonna take it and we've got a little combination of silver and brown here and we're gonna muck up these edges a little more. I like the brown a lot. You guys, who else does journaling? I've been doing, I, I, I will admit, I've been doing a whole heck of a lot of it lately and because, listen, I can only have so many signs to hang up in my house. Can you feel me when I say that? Like, crafters unite. Do, are you in that position where you say, I wanna create, but what else do I need? I have a gazillion pumpkins in my house. 
I, I do I do home decor for my house too. I do create things, craft things for my front porch and for my walls and you know seasonal. I do, but then like then what? Then when you still want to create but you got everything done, what do you do? What do you do? I'm gonna leave this big coffee stain. I don't want to lose that, but I do want to muck up these sides. So I've been doing a lot of creating and kind of like being creative on pages in books because I can close the book up and put it away. Okay, I have not touched the black mark yet, but I'm going to, I'm just gonna use a much smaller brush because I don't want all of it to become black. It would be way too much. So I'm gonna take a really little brush like this one and I'm gonna wet it a little bit and I'm gonna come around just the edges. I'm not gonna go in the inside because I don't wanna lose the Salem and this black is really dark. But do you see, just touching that a little bit, let me stand up and show you. Watch what happens to this line. If you look at this skinny line right here, watch what happens to it when I touch it. Oh, I need more water. Just put a little bit of water on your brush and then look at how dark and bold it gets. Because you activated the color and so it makes it look darker and bolder and you can spread it. So if you want it to be like spread out more, see what it does. So this one's just the black Stabilo all pencil, but it's just like the woodies. You see how much more bold that is? It's crazy and I love it. And I use the black Stabilo all pencil quite often in my, like almost anything, in my paintings that I do because I love it as an outliner. I love the messiness of it, the way it's kind of messy and it's perfect for this project. So I'm just gonna come around the edges of this a little bit and darken it up even a little more. Maybe I'll just come right in the middle because I want it to look messed up. Mucked up is the word I use. So we're gonna darken, see how, see what it's doing? See how dark it's making it? You know what we should do? We should do some drips. We should get some muddy drips on here. All right, I'm gonna let that dry because I love it just the way it is. I don't want it to move, so I'm gonna dry it. And then, let's, let's muck it up a little bit more. I didn't lose my witch, she's still here. She's gonna go right here. She is gonna go right here. I think I'm gonna just end up gluing her down. In the meantime, Woody's, there is a black woody, I'm sure of it. Yes, there is. I had brown. <laughs> I had brown and silver. There's the brown, let's put that one away. Here's the black one, the black woody. I'm gonna drip some of this stuff down. Let's, I don't wanna lose my word Boston, so I'm gonna try to avoid the word. But I'm gonna take some of this and we're gonna drip it down like it's like Ink. And if you think about it, way back in the 1600s, they didn't have ballpoint pens. They used like probably a feather <laughs> and ink, right? An inkwell, I'm guessing. I mean, I'm no historian, but that's what I'm guessing. We're gonna wet this and we're gonna let it drip, but I don't want this to drip. I don't want it, I just want this part to drip. So I'm gonna add a lot of black right here and here. See how much black I added? Where am I? Right here and here. And we're just gonna spray it. We'll go spray it and it's a little scary because I don't wanna lose control of this. So I'm gonna use this sprayer because it's more of a mister. It's from Hobby Lobby. It's Tim Holtz's Distress Sprayer Vaporizer. <laughs> vaporizer, that sounds like something from a movie. Okay, from a Marvel movie. <laughs> All right, we're gonna spray it. And you're gonna see it's gonna start dripping. The more I spray it, the more dark and drippy it's gonna get when it smells really good because it smells like coffee. See the drippy starting to happen? We're gonna let that drip down on my map like spider guts. <laughs> what would be, I don't know, spider guts. Spider guts, guts aren't black, but you know what I'm saying. It's supposed to be witchy. It's supposed to be witchy. You see this drip coming right here? I don't want it to hit my felt, so I'm gonna redirect it. Let's get some more drippies. See, so cool. 
Should I do the whole thing? It's really cool, isn't it? Let's do a little more. I don't know why I'm whispering. I think it's just because I'm excited. The more you wet it, the more it's going to drip. See? And the drippies just, the more you wet them, the heavier they're going to get and they're going to drip down. All right, I don't want to mess with my circles though, so I'm going to come over in this corner and do a little. Just so I don't, if I, if I wet this, this is all going to drip down and I'm going to lose the circle on Salem. We'll lose Salem because I have so much circle on there now. Hey, Gan Man. There's a lot of people saying hello to you, by the way. And you know who's online? Mm -hmm. Bella and Gigi's grandpa. Howdy. <gasps> uh oh, it's going over Salem, girls. Um, it's getting on my book. It's getting on the outside of the page. How long until you're done? I don't know. I'm just having fun here with the kids. With the kids out there. With the girls. Okay. Guys and girls. Do you want me to be done? Are you ready for bed? No. Oh my gosh, it went over my circle. Like 10 minutes and then come downstairs. Oh, okay. Make sure you're brushing and doing all the things. Yeah. Don't forget your vitamins, please. Yeah. That's cool, right? That is cool. Listen, it's very, I have a thin Alamo paper, like map, and I have a piece of thin um, packing paper, and then I have my pretty paper in the back here. So I better quit it with the drippies, and I think what I'm gonna do is dry it, but I like the look of it. And actually, I'm gonna add a little more, right there, right over Billerica. <laughs> I'm gonna spread it with my fingers. Because listen, the Stabilo pencils, you can just use your finger. It's just that cool. Um, let's add a little more up here. And instead of adding any... I have to be really careful because now I have very fragile, coffee-dyed map paper here. But if I want these drips to come down further, but I don't want to necessarily wet the paper anymore, I'm going to wet my finger and I'm going to just pull that color down with my finger how cool these are to play with. Look at that. All right. I want more darkness in here. I'm, I'm letting my, my accent really come out now. Let's really muck that up. And then because we have all that black on top, let's do just a little bit here. Then we're going to glue down our witch. I'm going to grab some names. You see my son wants me to come down with him when he's ready for bed. My husband is out of town for work. And usually when, usually when I'm live, my hubby hangs out with the boys, but he's, he's out of town for work. It's go time for the landscaping crew. <laughs> this is, got to get it done before winter comes up here in North Dakota. So he does road, road landscaping, like um, erosion control and seeding and stuff on highways. So all those highway jobs, they're ready for him and they want him there now, like yesterday. So before it freezes, all that work is done. Okay, this is really mucked up. It needs to dry. I'm not even going to bother with the dryer because of time and because of the noise. Let me check comments and see what everybody's saying. Hey, Penny. You just got the text that I was live. That's weird because I've been live for a while now, haven't I? Yeah, it's been an hour. Penny, that's weird. Hey, Christy says it looks really cool. Oh, it almost looks like a web. That would be a fun idea too. In fact, this stuff... That stuff, that webby stuff that I got from Dollar Tree would be really cool in this project, you guys. Hold on, now that you say it, where did I put it? I think I put it in the Halloween box. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Look. Oh, I'm making a big old fat mess here, but look, this stuff from Dollar Tree. I used it on the spider web. Let's put a little bit on here. Let's. Just, I, what I do, I just grab like a corner and I cut it off. We'll find a place for it. And what I use is this matte gel medium to glue it down. Because this is like big and it's got a bunch of holes and stuff, you use the matte gel medium and then when it dries, you can't even see it. That's what I used on here. It's a nice, really thick glue, but then when it dries, you can't see it. And see how well that stayed down on there? Maybe we should put this behind her because I wasn't sure if I was going to position her because she's got a, a lot of orange behind her here. But what if we did this? That. Whoever said the web? So smart. Okay, this stuff is thick. And it's a little... <laughs> there's a piece of that web in there. 
It's a little transparent. I just use a palette knife to grab it out of there. It's thick. See how thick it is? Kind of like sour cream, really thick sour cream. And it will work on here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it out here. It will dry clear. So I don't have to worry about it, but it gives me like a thick glue. You can see how it's like a paste. And it's matte. You can buy glossy. There's glossy too. But I'm using matte gel medium. This is in my Amazon store because people always ask me, what did you use? Go to my Amazon store. Go to the craft supplies that you love section. And you'll find all the craft supplies that I love. One, this is one of them. Okay, it does shed a little bit. You've cut it, so it's shedding a little bit. But I'm just going to push this in with my knife over the top a little bit to keep it really down. What do you guys think of this? I think this is going to be cool. Um, Donna says she just got it a few minutes ago too. What is going on with the world of technology? <laughs> what is it? All right. I think this is stinking cool. You see? Oh, and I got it in the wrong place. My, this palette knife is probably too big for this project, but that's okay. See what I'm doing? I'm just like pushing it through and getting it in there. See? See, 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 this is kind of cool. It's fun to play with if you like texture and if you love playing with like different supplies, which I do. Do you see? You can see the white, but you won't. When it's all done, said and done, you will not see that white. But we can now stick her on here. And I don't usually do this. I usually just use regular glue or paper, but it'll work. I've already got that other glue on there. So rather than trying to mix two, I'm just gonna, and then maybe I should put a little bit of spider webs on the map and then we'll be done. I say, and then we'll be done, but uh, whoever said web, you like inspired me to go grab that stuff. And then my matte gel medium. It's okay, it's gonna stick on there. It's a little thick in some spots, a little thinner than others. It's okay, she's gonna go right in here. And matte gel medium, because it's a thick, heavy glue, it holds things that are thick and heavy. So if you ever wanna use like chipboard in something, I'm gonna pull this, like I'm missing a little bit of this. I'm gonna pull it out. Come on, I want it a little further out. I wanted to center her, but now I want a little bit more of that web sticking out here. There we go. <laughs> it's just fun to play with. Cool, right? And then, then maybe we should take another chunk of it and put it on the map. Maybe, I'm gonna to try to take a longer triangle, like a longer skinnier, hard to see with my black apron on triangle and maybe we'll just stick it in this opposite side so we have that web up there maybe we'll put this web it's over by charlestown people i'm sticking it over by charlestown well yeah in somerville <laughs> if you know massachusetts you're like yeah i know where that is yep you do all right see for thick heavy things you need a thick heavy glue so let's spread this out a little bit Stick her in there. <laughs> I I'm, I need to go back to my Dollar Tree because I can see myself. There, they have this in like a creamy color, like an ivory creamy color and in the black. And I'm loving using it. So I think I could see myself because I like to do a lot of vintagey stuff. I could see myself using this a lot, like throughout the year, not just at Halloween time. And I did hear somebody say online recently that like, you gotta get it while the getting's good because it sells out. Okay, this is curling up. It's just because it's wet and I'm not holding it down. Let's put a little more glue in this section. It should stick just fine to everything. Fabric, paper, chipboard. All right, <laughs> I wanna do a little more work on that map once it's dry. But I love the black drippies coming down. I love that we got Salem highlighted there. We got the witch here with her webs. Now the glue looks funky because it's wet and it's white, but it will dry clear and you won't see it anymore. Actually, I just want to do this one thing because now I'm being a little picky, but I want to spread this web out a little more. Looks like I almost have two layers here. So I could spread this out, like extend it out a little more. It looks cobwebby. There's a cobweb down here. I got plenty of cobwebs in my house. <laughs> I, I, I'd rather craft and um, then 
<laughs> craft than clean. So I got plenty of cobwebs in my house. I love how it's like dark and it's like unusually shaped. I didn't like perfectly shape it to the, the page. I just let it, like cobwebs go wherever they want. They, they don't ask you. They don't ask you. They just go wherever they want. Cool, right? And then I love that we see this spider page here. And if you flip this over here, we've got eat, drink, and be scary. It's turning out to be a really cute little fall slash Halloween themed book. Now, somebody reminded me, don't close your books. When you're working with your books and you've got all this wetness going on, you really do just need to leave them open until they dry. These, if I had clips that would fit, I would clip this down because the, the edges of the paper want to come up. So one trick is to, while it's being, while it's drying, is to use little clips if they'll fit. If I can get it down far enough, this one's not going to go down. I'll, I'll need to get a, one of those long skinny chip clips and put it right here to hold this corner down because this keeps wanting to pop up on me. And if, if it pops up, I'm going to go down in a minute here. I'm going to pull names for Happy Meal, so don't go anywhere. And then... If it pops up like overnight while I'm letting it dry, I'll just come in with some of my glitter glue underneath there and I know it will just, it will, it'll get it to stay down. I'm sure of it. Or you could use hot glue or something else that's gonna, I love in the book. I create, not clean. Dawn, that's really cute. I have to get, we need to get t-shirts that say that. We create, we don't clean, we create. Like someone says, what do they say? I don't, I don't sweat, I glisten or I glit. Is it I glitter or I glisten or something like that? Hold on, let me grab that happy mail prize basket. Here it is. Look at this, you guys. Look at how many names. So we had three names added tonight. Michelle, Tracy, and Donna. Your names are gonna, I'm gonna fold them because they're all folded. That way they have fair, <laughs> like fair chance. I'm going to mix them up. I'm going to pull three more names. Now, these three winners, I will send you some happy mail. And they will include one of June's napkins, one of each of those napkins that June sent me. So that's fun. So thank June for that. I will announce, if these folks aren't here, I'm going to announce it inside the Crafty Chicks Club. And I will tag them. And um, let's hope that they're in there. And if they're not, we'll just keep pulling names until we get, until we get someone to claim the prizes. What about all us that didn't get the text in time? I don't know what's going on, Robbie. I'm not sure there are a bunch of you. I'm not sure. I can't say why that is. Sherry's going to try a journal. Yay! Okay, if my son was here, I'd have him pick, but he's not. So one, not looking. Two, is that two? Two, three. And you know what's been really fun? Looking at the dates of these, because some of them are old. Like, I've been putting names in that basket since before I got hacked in February. All right, who do we got from, this is recent, Elsie Austin, September 21st, your name went in. So Elsie Austin, you are a happy mail winner. Carrie Schweikert, I didn't put a date on yours, you're a happy mail winner. And Annalise Herwig from August, you're a happy mail winner. And I know these two ladies, I'm pretty darn sure they're in the Crafty Chicks Club. Not so sure about Elsie, so if anybody knows Elsie or Elsie, if you're hearing this, get in the Crafty Chicks Club or just private message me with your mailing address and email address so that I can send you some happy mail. Ooh, ooh. This is gonna dry. We're gonna keep working on this journal. I have other napkins to be putting in the journal. Like we, I did decoupage that napkin on that canvas and I have this napkin. This is in, this is one of the napkins in the Napkin Lovers Club bundle that went out this month. It's so sweet. And since this is like a fall book, it does have Halloween in it, but it's I, I want it also to be like fall harvest. Um, so that's that napkin's gonna be perfect in here. All right, you guys. Love, love, Patsy says. Thank you for that. Congratulations. I'm so glad you guys all say congrats. That's so nice of you all. Um, I don't sweat, I shine. That's Michaela. There you go. Cheryl, how long will that medium take to dry? Listen, when you buy these Liquitex mediums, they give you all the instructions on the back, and there are multiple ones of these. This one's matte. You can get glossy as well. There's heavy gel. There's soft gel. There's this gel. There's liquid gel. Um, this one says heavy body translucent gel creates a matte non-reflective finish, retains brush strokes, so it's got texture. 
It's um, opaque when wet, it dries translucent and matte, extends paint volume so you can add it to paints to make like a thick volume paint if you wanted to add it to your acrylic paints. Slows drying time and enhances blending for acrylic paints. That's what that's for. It's permanent, it's non-yellowing, it's flexible and water resistant when dry. You mix it with it, you can mix it with any acrylic color. I'm giving you all this information now. Um, you can thin it by adding a bit of water. Do not mix with oil. Great for glue, for collaging, mixed media. Now, does it say anything? There's lots of information on here. It doesn't say anything about dry time. Hold on, I'm looking, I'm challenging my eyes because it has all these properties. No, it does not say anything about dry time. I'm gonna guess it's gonna take two hours. I'm gonna say a couple of hours. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing a couple of hours. And I, I, I generally craft at night. So when I do something like this, then I just walk away, I go to bed, I'm brushing my teeth. I'm not really paying attention to the dry time. Um, my guess it's gonna be a couple of hours. This is on fabric, actually it's on felt and I used it for fabric, so it may even take a little longer because of the nature of the fabric being so porous, but I'm not quite sure. Thank you for sprinkling, Mary. You can't know how much that helps. And thank you to all of you who sent. I see that somebody, some more people are sending me some stars. So that's like a little tip jar. So thank you for that. Thank you for sending stars. And thank you to all of you who are part of my um, paid membership groups. You're all welcome to be here and hang out with us. All more crafty chicks, at the guys too, um, who wanna hang out the better as far as I'm concerned. And if, if you want to join the free community, it's called the Crafty Chicks Club. And I'm so glad, Deborah, that you enjoyed it. I am not gonna be on Friday night, Janice, because my son, there's a home football game and my son is on the football team. I missed Friday, he had a home game on Friday, this past Friday, and I missed it. Um, so I want to go to this this one. So no, I don't, I don't plan on being live on Friday night. Saturday, maybe. Peter Pan Pumpkin Eater. My first time to watch. Hey, Kay Helton, welcome, welcome to the Crafty Chicks community here and to the Comfy Nest. Thanks for being here. I'm so glad you love the book. Yay. I like to inspire you guys. Okay, gonna go check on my son. Say goodnight to him. Shutting off all the lights. It's bye-bye birdie time. Let me see, can I reach the cord? Let's see. See how it changes a little bit when I shut the lights off. I'm leaving this mess for the concierge to take care of. That's my dream, my dream guy. He's handsome and he's strapping and he can carry all the heavy things for me and he cleans up after I'm done. It's like my dream that I would have a craft concierge. <laughs> we joke about that here. So for Kay's benefit, she's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, I say, wouldn't that be nice? All I want for Christmas is a craft concierge. Someone who comes into my room and cleans everything up and puts it away nicely when I'm done. <laughs> Good night, you guys. Have a blessed night. I'll see you next time. Bye.